Creole Parametric will automatically create datum axes in your model in three situations. When you extrude a circle, when you revolve a feature, and when you create a whole feature. Before I show you how to get these datum axes automatically, let me define it real quick. A datum axis, like other datum features, is an imaginary feature that you put in your model, and you create these imaginary features in order to create and manipulate solid geometry. And a datum axis is like an infinite two-dimensional edge that you have in your model. So let's take a look at those three situations in which I automatically will get to an axis. If I select a plane that I want to sketch on from the mini toolbar, I can create a sketch feature. You'll notice from the mini toolbar tooltip that the keyboard shortcut for a sketch is the letter S. And I am in sketch mode. Let me turn off my datum plane visibility in order to unclutter my screen. And I can get to that from my in graphics toolbar. Let's click on the rectangle command. And I'm just going to sketch out a rectangle about yay big. And let's change some of these different dimensions in here. Let's change this to a value of 10 and change this one to a value of 6. And I'm going to put in a circle in this sketch in order to get an extruded circle. So let's sketch in a circle, put about over here. And let's change this diameter to a value of 2. Let's change this distance to a value of 2.5. And also change this dimension here to a value of 3. Just picking some numbers up. To get out of sketch mode, I will hold down the right mouse button and then click the check mark from the menu. So here I have the sketch. If I select it, I will be able to extrude the sketch. And let's change the depth here to a value of 4. That's good. And I will hit the check mark. And you'll notice here I have a datum axis that was automatically created through that extruded circle. Let's create a sketch for a revolve feature. I'm going to sketch on this surface over here. Let's choose this surface to face the right hand side of the screen just so I automatically get a sketch reference on there. And to get to the rectangle command, I can also get to that by holding down the right mouse button and clicking on it from the menu. And let's drag it out over here. Let's change this to a value of 1. And I'm just picking up some numbers out of thin air pretty much. And change this to a value of 1. So I'm happy with that sketch. Let me hold down the right mouse button again. And from the menu, I can choose the check mark to get out of sketch mode. With the sketch still selected, I'm going to click on the revolve command. And right now, it doesn't know what I want to revolve about. I will select this edge in the model, and I'm going to grab the drag handle to make sure I'm dragging it the way that I want. And because I dragged it through the model, it's automatically removing material. Instead of using a numerical value for the angle, I can change the angle option to, to selected, and then pick this surface. And so that way it's going to remove material essentially through 90 degrees. I'm happy with how this feature is configured. Let me hit the check mark or the middle mouse button. And I have my revolve feature created. And you'll notice that it automatically created an axis inside of that feature. And very last one to show you, let's create a whole feature. And I'm going to pick this surface over here. I've got some drag handles I can use to change the offset references. You can also hold down the right mouse button to activate the offset references collector. I'll hold down the control key to dimension from this surface as well. Let's change this diameter, make it a bit smaller, and change this offset distance here. I recommend you do as much as you can in the graphics window. Probably the easiest way to make sure that you're getting the geometry that you want. And for the depth option, I can right click over the depth drag handle and change it to what I want to use. In this case, I'll use two next and then hit the middle mouse button. And there you see I automatically got an axis. So again, extrude a circle, create a hole or revolve a feature and you will automatically get a datum axis in your model. One thing to note, I'm going to edit definition of my first sketch. And inside of here, let's change that circle to an arc. I'm just going to get in here and sketch in a vertical line. And then use my friend squiggle trim or delete segment as it's called in the ribbon and get rid of part of it. So now I have an arc in here instead. When I hit the check mark, 
you'll notice that I no longer have an axis over here. Might be easier for you to see if I change to say no hidden line. And again, I have an axis through the hole, axis for the revolve, but no axis for the extruded arc. Be aware that there is a config.pro option that you can change if you want to get an axis through an extruded arc. If you go to File, Options, and then Configuration Editor, I'm going to scroll down in here. I have it in my config.profile set to the default value. Show axes for extruded arcs. The default value is no. You can tell that the default value is no because it has an asterisk next to it. But if you change this option to show axes for extruded arcs to yes, and then click the OK button, I'm going to say yes. Let's go and add that to my config.profile. Then if you were to extrude an arc, you would automatically get an axis. Let's take a look at, uh, for, before we create some datum axes, let's talk about some of the different uses for datum axes in your model. In part modeling, they're often used in order to create other datums. So for example, let me go back, well, let me stay in this no hidden line mode for a moment. If I wanted to create a datum point, I could create a datum point on this axis hold down the control key and pick this surface, and that way I'm getting a point located at the intersection of those two references. Let me turn on my point visibility and my coordinate system visibility as well. And with the point still selected, I could use that for creating a coordinate system. Now it's using that point as the origin. And then for the orientation, I could say, hey, let's use this surface to determine Z, and then this let me activate this collector. This surface is going to determine X. And, oops, one thing I forgot to do, I forgot to activate the different collectors. Let me change the origin to the point, orientation, let me click in here, and this is going to determine Z, this is going to determine X, that's good, hit the OK button. So that way I've used an axis to create a point and a coordinate system. So they're used to create other different datum features. Another big use in part mode is for locating holes. So for example, I can create a datum axis. Here I have the datum axis dialog box. For the references, I can pick a surface that I want it to be normal to. Be aware from the drop down list you could choose through if I'd selected say an edge or something or a cylinder. And then for the offset references, I could dimension it from this surface and this surface over here. Change the values to what I want. And that way, I can end up getting an axis in my model. And with that axis still selected, if I activate the hole tool, I'm going to end up getting the hole located on that axis. I'll hold down the control key to select this flat surface as the starting reference. And for the depth, maybe I want this to be a numerical depth of 2. And change this diameter to a value of 1. And that way I have used a datum axis in order to create a whole feature. Other uses of datum axes, uh, you could use them as the axis of revolution for a revolve feature. In assemblies, they are used to assemble components. You could make an axis coincident to an edge or another axis in the model. And they're used extensively in mechanism connections. For example, pin connections and slider connections can use axes to define your translation axis or your rotation axis. You'll see them a lot in skeleton models, and they were used as set datums in the old 1994 and earlier versions of geometric dimensioning and tolerancing. So those are a few of the different uses for datum axes. Let's talk about how to create datum axes in your model. Essentially, you are going to select enough references in order to locate a essentially a, an imaginary edge in the model. So for example, let's say I select this particular edge over here. From the mini toolbar, I can choose to create an axis. And since it had enough references, it just created the axis in the model for me. If I right click and hold, I can get to edit definition. And here's the original dialog box. So you can see the edge and it's going through the edge. If you go to the display tab, you can adjust how big it appears on the screen. By default, a datum axis is going to be shown just slightly bigger than the model itself. But if you click on adjust outline, you can 
Grab the drag handles to control how big it appears on the computer screen. I can make it even bigger than the model itself. And here you can see I have a value that I can change. Be aware that you don't actually control the start points, but just the essential overall length. Alternatively, for controlling the size from the drop down list, you can go to the reference tab and select a reference, like for example, this other edge or maybe even the surface in the model. And then it's going to use that surface to drive the size of the datum axis as it's displayed on the screen. And from the properties tab, you can change the name. In part mode, the name by default is going to be A underscore and then the next available number. But I could change this to center if I wanted to. Uh, if you are creating this in an assembly, it'll be called AA for assembly axis underscore and then the next available number and I'll click the OK button. And so there we have an axis and again it's displayed so it's slightly bigger than that reference surface that I had selected. It's kind of hard to see because it's located right on a coincident edge. Let's take a look at some other methods of creating them. I'm going to turn on my datum plane visibility real quick. And so I could create a datum axis at the intersection of two planes. So for example, I could choose the datum plane called top, hold down the control key and pick the datum plane called right. If I have trouble picking on the screen, I can pick it in the graphics area and then click the OK button. Let me turn off my coordinate system visibility and my plane display and my point display. And again, it'll be very hard for you to see that. Oops, looks like I didn't actually create it. Let me click the axis button and then select, I think it was right and top and click the OK button. Oh, there it is. There's the axis I just created over there. Uh, also, you could create it at the intersection of two surfaces. So I could select a surface, hold down the control key, select another surface, and from the mini toolbar, choose a create an axis. And there we have the A8 axis going through that particular edge. I can create an axis and select two points or two vertices. For example, select that vertex, hold down the control key and select another vertex, and I get it through there as well. Uh, if you do have cylindrical surfaces, you could choose, if I choose create the axis, and then I could pick this cylindrical surface, and by default, I would be getting an axis through the middle of that surface. But from the drop down list, you could choose if you wanted to be normal to the surface instead, and then pick an additional reference, like for example, I don't know, this edge over here. Uh, and alternatively, you could be parallel to the surface and through the other reference. But let me remove that and change this to through. And that way I'm getting it through the center of that particular surface. So again, when you're creating a datum axis, select enough references to define how you want to use it. If you do choose to be normal to a reference, you can dimension it off of some offset references as well. And if you need to use the drop down list to control how you are creating that datum axis. Let's take a look at also how you can create datum axes in sketch mode. So for example, let's go back to the very first sketch that I had created. Let me click edit definition. And inside of here, you have a centerline command in the sketching group. Don't confuse that with the centerline command in the datum group. The centerline command will allow you to create a datum axis in your model. So for example, I will click center line. And I'm going to snap it into the midpoint of this line here and let it go horizontal. And so that way you can see this center line again created from the datum group. Now when I hit the check mark to get out of here, you can see that I have a datum axis. It's hidden because it was in the sketch, but let me unhide the sketch, make it visible. So you can see this is that axis that was created from the center line command. Also, similarly, if I go to the sketch and then edit definition, you can drop in different points in here. So for example, I'm going to click on the point command and let's create a point that's located on the axis over here. And right now it's dimensioned from that side of the arc or the half circle. Let me change this to a value of four and create another point. I'm just gonna 
drop in a point over here and then dimension this some different values and now when I hit the check mark you'll notice that I have axes at the lo those locations so again just to clarify let me go back to the original sketch if you put in a center line in your sketch you're going to get an axis through that center line that's in the plane of the sketch if you drop in a couple of these datum points not the sketching points the datum points and you extrude that sketch you're going to get axes at those different locations and that's something I very often use for mounting holes so for example if I'm creating the base feature for a sketch I'll drop in a bunch of different points here in the sketch for example let me drop in another one over here let's say I want a mounting hole in the center and for the sake of this demonstration I'm not going to dimension that one now I have a bunch of axes that were created there in the sketch and I could say hey you know what I want a mounting hole that's located through here starting on this surface we make that diameter a little bit smaller and let's change the depth here to a value of one and hit the check marks so that way I have that particular hole created and I could even pattern the hole and if I use the point pattern option I could select that original sketch and you'll notice that I'm able to locate those holes on those axes that were generated inside of the sketch so again something I find just very convenient to do for defining my mounting holes or locating holes in the base of a part that I'm building very last thing to mention regarding datum axes something you want to take into consideration when you are creating layers for axes so for example if I go to my layers command I have a layer for my axes in here and you'll notice that my layer for axes includes a sketch an extrude feature a revolve feature a hole in addition to the datum axes that I created explicitly and that's because my rule for axes if I right click on it and go to layer properties is defined let's go to the rules tab and then choose edit rules I use the has axes option if you wanted to you could say that you are looking for features of the type and instead use uh, datum axes in here let me add a new rule and that way I can change this to oh for some reason it's not given to me uh, but uh, if you just chose axes in here you wouldn't get the axes that were created as part of the sketch or part of the extrude or part of the revolve or part of the whole I'm gonna cancel out of here uh, so again if you're creating a layer for the axes you might want to use the has axes as the type as opposed to just datum axes themselves I hope you enjoyed this video for more information please visit www.creowindchill.com if you learned something from this video please give it a thumbs up and if you like this video please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded thank you very much